Ping the uh, Yorick uh, half an hour ago. I think he said he's going to join. So yeah. And you're in, so you're in Wisconsin. You're, are you like Middleton or something? Or I'm right in Madison. Madison, yeah. Yep. You know, I live a little school there, right? For the PhD. Oh yes, I do recall that actually. Yeah. I remember hearing that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it's a good uh, good town. Do do you miss us? This is where I got radicalized, my man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. A bunch of hippies come out of there. <laughs> yeah. So, that's all right, though. You're going to change the world. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a good place. Um, so let's, whenever your joins, we'll maybe uh, cash them up. But yeah, let's start because we're, man, we're, so we've got this bill coming up. And uh, Saturday, people are descending onto this place, about 12 people for five days. We're actually aiming to finish most of the house during that time using our swarm build methods. So it's about, if you talk about the numbers there, it's 500 hours. Um, the guess right now, it's anywhere between 400 to 1,000, well, about, I'm guessing 400 to 800 hours is my most likely guess for the amount of time the city home will build. It's a 1,000 square foot panelized modular construction thing. Um, that's kind of what we're looking at for the, the amount of effort that's going to go in over the next week. Um, have you taken a look at any of the links on 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 the thing? Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, I think. Yep, York. How you doing? Fun. And you guys? Good. Long yeah. time no see, Martin. Yeah, long time. Um, you're a little frozen, but maybe you don't have a one gig fat pipe like they give us in America. Because <laughs> you're in the Banana Republic of Belgium? <laughs> no. Yeah, Sorry, exactly. Uh, Got to move down to, to uh, Brussels again, or uh, to Brazil again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, well, anyway, so let's, let's get, get going on this. Um, I, w I would like to see how, how you can help regarding getting the open tool chains working here fully um, on our CD home. So, so part of the context here is that we're actually doing a, planning on a very big collaborative design design event, which we call the Extreme Enterprise Hackathon, where the goal is to, pro to do a lot of work on productizing. It's an extreme, we call it Extreme Enterprise Hackathon, uh, where we take what we have on a CD go home and go on, in, as far into the full publishing up to the the business model of how you can train people and build these out. So the reason why I need help from you guys especially is because we want to use open tool chains and enable a lot of people to do the design. So basically like when I come to you guys, it's not like, can you get me the detail? I, I would actually be more interested in what is the process you use to get that detail? And how would we do that in open source? So we have, we know we have FreeCAD, we have other tools, we've got GIMP. Uh, but if possible, not, not if possible, I mean, we got to do it. I mean, our philosophy here is um, in order to get the kind of large scale collaboration that we want and actually starting with a goal of solving housing, we've got to use open tool chains. So we'd like to make that inclusive. And to be inclusive, you got to go open source, open source tool chains that are easily accessible to anyone. Like, so we can have people in Africa or in Europe or Asia, anywhere, uh, collaborate on this. Right now, see the the modular construction we do right now. That's not relevant for Africa, as in like this is light frame, which may not be relevant there so much outside of some regions. But we are going to see deconstruction, not this year, but the year after. Now we have proven out, uh, we had a Belize build of a CB micro house. We can pretty much master the, the modular building techniques with swarms while doing compressed earth block. So that's actually a pretty good deal uh, because we want to roll out this house with compressed earth blocks just like we're rolling it out with the light frame construction right now. So, yeah. And any, any questions? Of, how does this sound? Have you guys actually taken a look at the, the design itself? Uh, i just seen pictures at all. I haven't really delved too deeply into it. Um, yeah. So, so maybe I can ask you, so uh, regarding the open open tool chains 
for your process. Tell me, tell me a little bit more about it. So how do you guys do it right now? What can we build upon that from there? And of course, first question is like, are you open to sharing all the details of that or is this, um, or is there any trade secrets in there or anything like that? Or Not at all. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much how we work already. Yeah. Um, I mean, everything is on the open, everything is on, it wasn't GitHub, GitHub, now it's on GitLab, uh, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. But uh, the, the whole the way we work, all the projects we work together, basically, is uh, mm -hmm. almost 100% open. I say almost 100% because usually you have some data you get from the client, uh, which is like private stuff that you don't want to be public. Uh, but for that, we already have a kind of good workflow, like um, part of the repository is encrypted. And that is where we store all the sensitive information. And all the rest is is open. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, yeah, it didn't happen much yet, I think, that someone else takes this, this thing and, and try to do something with it. Most of the time, it's just between us. And some people come look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's totally made for, for sharing and to be shared. And mm -hmm. um, yes. go, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, unfortunately, uh, most of our projects um, have been using Revit just because, you know, some of the larger projects is somewhat harder to, well, from my perspective, York might, he's more capable. But from my perspective, it would be hard to, you know, um, develop a construction set for a large multifamily, for example, um, out of free CAD. But uh, more and more, we have some uh, smaller projects where we're um, really harnessing Blender, BIM, and free CAD in, in order to make the construction documents. Um, I'm more facile, um, comfortable with Blender. Uh, or Blender BIM is a, it's a plug-on for Blender. Uh, York obviously is, is very comfortable with FreeCAD, um, but you know we we have over the years and more recently now um, looking at trying to improve the translation uh, between Blender and FreeCAD, and, and hopefully getting to a point where we can round trip content uh, between the two platforms without losing any resolution. I think we're pretty far from that day, but that's kind of the, the intent there. Um, our most recent project um, is a residence, small uh, renovation, where we're, we're modeling in Blender, and I believe uh, York is in, importing that model into FreeCAD and doing all the annotation and documentation in FreeCAD. Is that correct, York? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and we did it. <coughs> we started in Blender Beam because we we wanted. Let's try to do one fully in Blender Beam, and um, we're like encountering since it's not much used for, for production yet. Yet we're encountering some problems to, to output the, the drawings, etc. And mm -hmm. so right now we're using FreeCAD because it's better for that. But yeah, the, the idea is really that you end up producing content that is software agnostic and uh, that you could work on with basically anything and of course it works better with 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 open source software uh, for a series of reasons um <clears throat> but but in theory it's the data that needs to be open and not so much the, the software that you use to to produce it and um so we make use of open formats. We do all that we can in IFC, um, <clears throat> and um, and yeah, and that's how it goes. And IFC is still, <clears throat> let's say, not much used to go up to the final to have details in that and that kind of stuff. We did it a couple of times already. <clears throat> we did a couple of detailing. Um, projects fully with 
IFC of more or less, like let's say, all the all the data, all the geometry is IFC, and then I think all of them we did the annotation in Revit at the end. But <clears throat> all the detail itself is is IFC. Yeah, for those projects that uh, Yorick was talking about, we basically just concentrated on large scale details for. A particular project uh, um, for the few projects that we worked on it was a residence out in California um, but by just concentrating on the large-scale drawings we were able to take a very small subset of a project right um, and be able to translate that back and forth from uh, Revit at the at time and FreeCAD and we use IFC and because we were only using a very small subset of the IFC we we're able to kind of translate that data uh, without any really f fidelity loss and it, specifically it was really simple it was just like simple extrusions right and ma material names and that's it that's all we all, all we translated so we didn't get into you know the the more complicated part of BIM where we're talking about intelligent walls and and windows that you know mend into walls we, we didn't even worry about that we just worried about the just kind of the real atomized uh, part of the project um, and so by doing that we were able to like you know see some returns on that it was kind of a good um, kind of a wedge to so to speak in order to entertain round tripping workflows because if you look at the IFC uh, uh, schema right now um, you can't translate you lose some fidelity when you translate an entire model from one program to another. Um, it's kind of impossible. But if you're just looking at a small subset like we did, you know, there's possibilities there. Can you do the full geometrical models back and forth? Uh, yeah. what? Go ahead, Yor. Yes, uh, you, would, you would lose some of the, um, <clears throat> let's say, um, some of the modeling history. Uh, for example, you had um, an axis line that you extrude to become a wall. Um, when you do this back and forth, you, you still keep the, the shape of the wall, but you end up losing some stuff such as the, what was the baseline that you used to, to build the wall, such that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I would say the final geometry is pretty resistant. Um, <clears throat> you would lose some information but it's it's complex matter because what for example what you would need in one program to to edit that wall is not the same that you would need in another program and <clears throat> so there is not much uh, let's say a consensus o over what modeling history would be some kind of generic way to do let's say a wall or things like that but let's say for simple things like you have a, a flat 2D shape and you're extruding it to produce an object, um, these simple things are usually pretty resistant. That that stays. Um, so I would say <clears throat> it, we're not in the perfect world yet, but it's already doable to work with with uh, those formats and have something that can be edited later. Um, can you keep all, like for example, the, the FreeCAD file has a bunch of parts, so say an assembly of 100 parts or so. Um, yeah. Can I, can I sh share my screen with you? Yeah. So let's do this. And so, for example, if, um, actually, let me put in paste in this link where I'm wor working from so you can also open up these files in the chat box. This is where I've got the CAD, but I'll pick, pick out a file from there, such as, I go to part library. Uh, let's take a wall module, so just to see how this would work. So wall modules and a table of contents, number eight. Let's just take our basic eight foot I'll actually, win, you know, take the window, eight foot window panel, click on that, so I download that. And then let's open it up, and 16 is um, 
because of the simplicity of the interface here. Uh, so Okay, this guy kind of ripped apart here. I don't know what happened, but uh, so a model that that's that's made up of a bunch of parts. So here we're we're taking everything layer by layer. So you got you, know, you got your trim, you got your insulation, you got your framing members. Some details, like for example, um, like this corner flashing, which is just representative, or like the drip edge, which is say underneath the trim here uh, so we can so basically it's just very simple in the part where you've got itemized mod itemized list of things and like so at a model like this you can completely go back and forth where you return you would be able to go back and forth and retain the file names the actual part names too or would you lose that in a Revit? yes no this is you would definitely keep keep everything there. Mm -hmm. okay. um, this is actually, the way you've modeled this is kind of similar to how we've modeled our 3D details. Yeah. Would you exactly. agree? Yeah. yeah. Um, you're not really using really much intelligent BIM no. here, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's more just kind of objects, uh, assembly objects. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And the thing that we have, because we do like, you know, two by six piece of lumber, it's actually two by six lumber, 38. Five inches, so we actually itemize it like that. Yeah. Where running a little script out of this gets you a full bill of materials, actually. So that's what we're able to do right yeah. now atomic bill of materials, um, summed up over the parts. Um, that's cool, that's, that's good. Is, that. is the part name, um, well, York, you're more familiar with this, um, and Marson, too, that. Is the part name derived from the material name? Because yeah. that's ultimately yes or oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, it is. So, for example, okay. this item here is four inch. Is the part name derived from the part? Like here, yes, S A W P. So that's self-adhering waterproof barriers. That's the tape, flashing tape for the window right there. In the name, you just identify it. So you have both the dimension, and then you've got the identity of that. Like this is. SOP, self-adhering waterproof barrier, and 50 inches of it. So I actually put in all that information there. So when I parse it, it's actually human readable at that mm -hmm. stage. Uh, so that somebody exports that bill of materials and they can actually try to make sense of it. Yeah, like flashing corners that go, so that, that's just in the flashing corner that would go on the bottom, bottom corners of the window, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so very simple. Uh, kind of a process. What's your way. What's your documentation look like? That so that's one thing obviously that would not translate right now is that you know if you had elevations and plans and dimensions and annotations and all that, that's something that's not going to um, run trip. Yeah, the, the the drawings themselves. Yeah, the, yeah. So what do you guys do right now for uh, your? Do we have a way to do it to annotate in FreeCAD? You mentioned yes. about that? How do we do that? Um, <clears throat> basically, for something simple like this one, I would do that simply with um, text draw workbench. Mm -hmm. Like you create a sheet and, and you put the notations there. And you have, for each of your parts, you have a, any number of, of drawings. Um, Let's say doing a wall building at the moment uh, is hard to do fully in the in the uh, tech draw workbench. So what I do is uh, doing an intermediary step. Uh, I cut the cut the model and do all the duty thing uh, in the model itself. Let's say uh, next to the model you have a a, a two D drawing, and then I put that drawing in on the sheets. Um, because it's easier to, to put your stuff, etc. Et uh, but for simple, simple objects, it's totally doable to do that fully in, in TextRaw yet. The only problem is that TextRaw is a bit slow, so for larger models, it can be pretty inefficient. Um, for but um, how do you do the 
cross sections, like you're saying, you what else do you do? So you, sometimes you just manually well draw up. No, I mean, how are you getting yeah, there? You yeah, you have several ways to do that. Uh, you have section planes in the, in the Arch Workbench. You just put a section plane through your model, and then from there you 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 take the the result with it, which is a complete view, cut view of, okay. of your piece. And then you can put annotations on that, um, hatching, all. All, all that you need. And um, that's one way to do it. And Tech Draw, the Tech Draw workbench also has other tools to do sections as well, uh, which is fully on on the sheet itself. You, you first make one elevation view, and then you can derive sections from it. And um, it works as well as the other method um, but same limitations uh, as the rest of tech draw uh, it's slow for, for <coughs> at yeah, the moment until we have something a bit better yeah. there is some work um, in relation to this um, the dn molds working on uh, and um, thomas i can't remember his last name of open knives she's shall yeah, um, <clears throat> that they're trying to uh, basically codify the annotation layer, right, in the actual IFC file itself. And so, and I would be interested, and in, I'd talk to York a little yeah. bit about this as well, is, is to try to, you know, translate that IFC, or the annotation layer in the IFC file to FreeCAD as well. And mm -hmm. I'm not, I haven't talked to York or, uh, in a while about this, but I think there's still some potential there. <clears throat> yeah, I believe so too. So you would have a, a file which contains the model and also 2D work on top of that model. And yeah, that, that would be really, really good. And they had that, they had in earlier version of IFC all the tools to put dimensions, uh, annotations, and in the last <coughs> version they just removed it. And so there, you can, there is a kind of movement interest in putting that, that back. Uh, now in, they they in the IFC format. Um, put back all the annotation stuff, dimensions. Yeah. Uh, they had deprecated They had deprecated the 2D schema. Um, mm -hmm. They used to have it in the schema, but they deprecated it. But um, Dion and Thomas are kind of looking a way to hack, hack it so um, using the same schema, you're using the um, uh, the conventional schema to to relate really hack it to accommodate these two D mm. annotations. You're saying the <coughs> IFC schema they deprecated this this thing. This annotation yes. Layer? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a little controversial. Um, yeah. Would you say? <laughs> oh, what's the what's the what's the lowdown on the on the controversy? Is it is it foul play like like because people want no to not necessarily it. I think it's just you know ultimately some people think that it could be useful right and so mm -hmm. they're questioning whether why they why they deprecated it I think mm -hmm. one one camp thinks um, that there should be no two D annotation that everything should be in the model type of thing mm -hmm. um, so there's l many subtle arguments. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yor, could you show an example of which of like a cross-sectional cut work coming out of the arch work bench or through tech draw, just so we can let, see? Mm -hmm. Let me open the last one that we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'll share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys viewing, seeing my screen? Yeah. Yep. Okay, this is the one. All right. Yeah. So basically, that's what we're producing with it. 
Um, here there is some stuff that's turned off. Where is it in there? Oh, right, so we changed the scale and I forgot to update it. Anyway, uh, so that's basically what we're producing. Um, and that's basically is this is how it works. Um, so we have here two models the existing site situation and the new situation. And you see here. It's actually, it's actually, actually in the same building? building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just made two different models for the convenience because uh, oh, okay. there was so much difference in, in the pieces that um, it was boring to just identify pieces that would be demolished. And I found it simpler to do that way. So I could play with the second model without touching the first one. Uh, so you see here uh, four section planes. Uh, the section plane is just this this tool here. In the I'm using the, the beam workbench. Uh, here, um, oh, workbench. Workbench. but you have the same in Arch Workbench. Oh. Basically, the Beam Workbench is a kind of uh, experiment we're doing to try to make it in, uh, in a better interface. Um, so, basically, how does this work? It's simple, you place something like that. Um, you tell it which objects it must see. In this case, um, the, the, this whole uh, part here, because you don't need to cut all the model. You just need to, to tell which parts you are cutting. And then from that, either you produce this. Mm -hmm. This is automatic. Basically, you have two objects, one that shows the cut lines and another one that shows the viewed lines. And then all the blue stuff is annotated here right on the, on the model. Um, we could do that also. Another way is to do that fully on the tech drawer page. But you can do that as well. You can just from here. Uh, if you use this tool here, you produce a 2D projection here in the, in the model. Which tool uh, are you using? This Shape 2D view. Shape 2D view, uh -huh. That's, um, where is it? Uh, shape 2D view, this one. Okay. That's from Draft, uh, and it's also in the more bench. And um, but you can also go on your tech tool page and insert a section view. So you just select a section and click this button, and you place this view directly on the tech tool page without passing through this this stage here. And um, it depends. I kind of like working here actually. Um, so um, putting all my my stuff here because I can also I have more more control. All the, these these things are two uh, D symbols taken from the XF file, so it's it's kind of easier to work to cut away here um, in this model than than on the on this page. Yeah. And then you have all the results here, and you can still tweak the line thickness. Uh, Colors and that, and that kind of stuff. And annotations, you just pop them right in in, the tech, in this example in the tech drawer workbench. Do you have snapping? You have snapping to the dimensions and things like that? Uh, here, not. Here, yes. That's another reason why why I prefer to do everything here. And if you use a grid, it's kind of pretty easy to align your dimensions. So now I should change the. the Text height. I don't remember why I did it. Oh, right. No. I mean, uh, uh, I mean centimeters. 
mm. into a script for architectural. So. Um, that's why the texts are bigger than they should be because um, I just switched to a centimeter for another project. Uh, but here you see they are still the correct way. So that's basically how it works to, to make to the to the output. Um, mm -hmm. And so you could do that uh, fully. Uh, you have things that you can do s s simple things such as taking an object, going here, and, and placing a view of that object here. Um, And here it is. And um, change the scale. So you can put any number of cross sections in the attack draw? Yes. And then you place your things like this, and um, all right, custom. Otherwise, it recalculates. If it's automatic, it depends on the page size. Here it is. I can tell which operations are memory inten intensive on yes. your side. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then you can do, yeah, you, you see that this has some advantage, you can put stuff um, like uh, hatching, um, can you define hatch fill patterns as well? Yes, you can use AutoCAD hatch patterns. Um, like you can use these path files, and uh, you can also uh, put dimension. Okay, you must select the line. Um, where is the text size here? <laughs> So you can pretty much do it all here as well. Um, mm -hmm. It depends. It's it's a bit slower, uh, but you have uh, other advantages, and uh, it depends basically on the size of the page you you are doing. Uh, but both work. Um, yeah. So yeah, you you have enough here to 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 do the job. Uh, I would say. Uh, but but yeah, uh, what's really interesting is what uh, Ryan was talking about. Um, this all could happen inside an IFC file, and um, so so th there would be ways to to I would stop sharing my screen. Um, mm -hmm. How do I do that? Yeah. Click on that button again. So. Um, yeah, the, 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 there is a lot of uh, experimentation possible, there are workflows possible to, to better workflows uh, to, to find and, and, and so, but uh, I would say there are tools already to, to do all the, all the, all the, all the things up to the end with all the quality that you need. Uh, it's there. Um, it's still a bit, um, let's say, it's a part that not many have used yet, so you still have to look for, for good workflows and, and, and so that's what we're doing with Ryan since for years. Um, mm -hmm. But but yeah, I, I think everything is there and um, really having that kind of um, libraries of, of components, building components, um, it's something that's not much happening yet, and should should happen more. And, um, You'd like, like to see assemblies of components or individual parts, like here's lumber, or this is 
So uh, everything, everything. Uh, this particular assembly, here's, here's, assembly. Like, here's a nice, excellent way to do your bathroom. Here's a module, bathroom module, things like that. Things like that, or um, I would say, yeah, like uh, Windows assemblies, um, roof assemblies, um, mm -hmm. foundations. So uh, basically, you would abs for example, abstract. Okay, here's like for a foundation. Here's like your slab, your your sill plate, and details of whatever the anchors. And you have just a nice cluster that's all inclusive and and generalizable. That that kind of deal. Maybe or. Um I mean, how do you expand, like, if you have a library, how do you apply it to any, you know, you're doing different kinds of buildings, right? So how do you apply the library yeah. outside of that being a detail just for that? Uh, I, I would say, you, you mean the, the technical aspect of it, how, you, how, how would you use oh, a library? Yeah, so what I'm saying is the ability to use, like, say you have the one small sec cross-sectional detail, regardless of how long it is, what the whole shape looks like, but you can abstract those pieces that tell the builders how to how to build it, right? That you can yeah. do. And that's, that's the kind of stuff with opening design, you're, you're creating libraries like that? Uh, yes, well, um, yes. So, um, it's more on the specific object, like a profile of, of steel, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean steel angle profile of um, a coping cap or something, a uh, profile of, um, I don't know, a drywall bead or something like that. Some uh, profiles that you use over and over and over again, but also too, um, BIM objects, like a, not just the profile, but also, um, and this more deals in with Revit where you're getting into families. Um, unfortunately, um, there's, well, correct me if I'm wrong, York, but there's no means to really translate kind of a family back and forth. We, we've been working on this, um, but there's no clear-cut way of doing that right now. Mm. Um, but generically speaking, yes, um, as BIM projects go, yes, it's good to have um, component libraries that you're pulling from, right? Like, like we develop a Revit template that has a lot of content we use over and over and over and over and over again. So that's that's the kind of content that seeds basically projects, and that those can be profiles, or they can be BIM objects, or they can be schedules. How the schedules are um, uh, organized. So. And if you want to do that in the FreeCAD without the Revit workflow, so the detail you have at Open Design that's all Revit stuff, or. Some stuff it's, a bit of, it's a bit of everything. Uh -huh. There are parts, Revit parts in FreeCAD. And there is a bit of, and yeah, we would like to unify a bit that and have um, unified formats and unified ways to store yeah. the things that could be used everywhere. But there's actually a recent discussion on the uh, OS Arch uh, community forum where we're talking about trying to standardize uh, structural profiles, right, Yorick? Remember that yeah. uh, that prof uh, post? So that's kind of a, you know, a interesting discussion that taps into um, this topic, um, is to try to develop a kind of a more agnostic um, standard to kind of translate these assets back and forth, just specific to the profiles, the structural profiles. Where do I find the, the details on your side there? Uh, that's is that yeah open that's opening design or is that opening detail? Oh, okay, opening detail. Th yeah. Well, I don't know what you're looking for. That one's I'm specific to details. developing those uh, large scale details. Yeah. So this that's Revit. That is Revit. Yep. Uh, half of those details you probably see were um, done using the workflow where we translated the, the objects back and forth between FreeCAD and Revit. And then ultimately the annotation though was done in uh, Revit. Mm -hmm. But we, 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 then, we tried a kind of automatic uh, 
way like all these different hatches that you see there mm -hmm. are actually different materials and uh, so you define these materials in uh, whatever you work like in this case it was done in in FreeCAD and then when this detail comes in Revit there is a kind of script that parses all the materials uh, put a different hatching on, on them and extract these annotations that you see there and places one annotation for each material uh, automatically then you just have to like adjust manually it was but a pretty cool, cool script uh, yeah. Dim Dimitar I can't remember his last name uh, I think he's from Poland he ended up developing this uh, dy dynamo script that would basically pull the material name out of the object and create these automatic annotations it was like in, you know within seconds it would it annotated it. So obviously you can see that that's a benefit because if you know we were translating um, the the objects back and forth between FreeCAD and Revit, and then when it came to final production, we had to produce the PDFs. Right, we could r run this script theoretically run this script. Right, it needs a lot more improvement, but run the script and you could have have this annotation all just auto populate and it, and it would be done you know so then then you know it doesn't matter um, that that is a more fluid brown tripping workflow right you're not you can automate the annotation you're not losing much intelligence then mm -hmm. the dynamo script yeah. was that within are you talking about within FreeCAD? no 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 that wasn't that was in Revit. I I'm I'm sure FreeCAD could do that yes right? you, yeah 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 and um, yeah, at that time we were like uh, Revit. Revit was our production yeah. platform, and yeah, and the uh, client ultimately wanted you know yeah. Revit drawing at the end of the day. So yeah, but uh, the the way these things were modeled in FreeCAD is pretty similar to uh, to the way you are modeling your your stuff, like boxes and very simple objects like that. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty fast and. Um, and and pretty solid when you go to other software because so example, there are simple objects. So if I have have my window module that's in sufficient detail, I can just simply take a cross section right now and generate something like this, say within yes. tech draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. And the hash fill patterns, these. Um, does FreeCAD already store them, or do you have to import them? Uh, the hatch patterns. Uh, yeah. You have uh, one that comes with FreeCAD that has, you, you've seen, that's the one I just used now, that has like six hatch patterns. Uh -huh. uh, but Google for a file called acad.pat, and that's the official um, AutoCAD yeah, uh, Pat with T. Uh, from is pattern. it ACAD, ACAD Pat? Yeah, with a dot between with within with between ACAD and Pat. Yes, that one. And that's the the file from AutoCAD. That it it's around on the internet. And then you have like I don't remember like hundred hatch uh, patterns available. And you can use that in FreeCAD instead of the one of the, the um, internal one and um, uh, how do you get from AutoCAD that's in DXF format? It's a text file actually. Text file? Yeah and it, it contains pattern definition uh, in AutoCAD format and FreeCAD used the same uh, oh. same language and you have hundreds of these pet files on, on the internet with all kinds of pattern definitions, oh. and they're all usable in in, in FreeCAD. Oh, did you program that? Up? That's that's your work. No, that's uh, the guy behind the TechDraw workbench, who is not working on FreeCAD anymore. So at the moment, TechDraw is a bit orphan. Hmm. But me and many many people are already looking at it, and we maintain it, and um, so it won't it won't die. Um, just a matter of someone else uh, 
interested in investing his time in, in it. But Okay. Um is it well documented that part? Or is that a silly question? <laughs> Sorry, what? Or is that a silly question? <laughs> I didn't understand the question. Uh, the question is, is it well documented? The, the part of how you work with the architectural patterns? It should be... Uh, let me Let's see, uh, can you point me to that on the free, so it would be free cat wiki? Let's go... Uh, Let's see. That say it, yes, it's definitely documented. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Petra hashing. The, the, your template for opening design that you used, that's a free cat that what you showed before. That was a free cat template, right? The detail? Yeah, where, where you are showed the opening design of that bit of. Um, Oh yeah, the, the the sheet that I showed. Yeah. Yes. Mhm. Mm so that's all all doable. And when you submit a document to say the client or building department, what do you do? You put it all into a PDF or how do you do it? Yes, correct. Yep. Depends if the client is like is an architect or not, um, or a other developer or something like that of. So uh, constructor, then they would want something more than, than the PDF usually. Yeah. But if um, it's like a final client, uh, someone building their house, yeah, the PDF is what they what they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We ha we actually have a uh, a client right now that's pretty uh, suave and tech savvy, and um, they actually we share in the Blender file with them, and they're opening the file and and. Which can be kind of dangerous sometimes because there, you put stuff in there that you don't necessarily want or anticipate a client seeing, <laughs> but they open it and they, they review it and they're like, oh, what were you doing here? I'm like, oh, I was just playing around. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be client facing, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's, that's rare. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And Ryan, so when you use the Blender workflow, is that well documented somewhere? Or how, how oh, is the very much. Very much. Well, Blender, you know, in general, the, the workflow is very well documented. Oh, what's the um, link? Can you paste the link for that documentation? Well, it's everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, just to learn Blender in general, is that's, no, but, there's tons of uh, but the Blender videos been, out yeah, there. Been part. It's huge. And it's hard no, to say. I mean, outside of Blender, yes, Blender is, is yeah, it's a masterpiece. But the BIM part, the BIM part? Oh. Yep, you can just search Blender BIM, you'll find it. It'll pop up. It's one word. It's, uh, it's, there's more and more developers seem to be jumping on it, uh, but it's led by Dan Molt uh, in Australia. Um, also, too, it's, it utilizes, like FreeCAD utilizes, the, uh, the open IFC shell um, ge uh, geometry kernel. Um, mm. so. Yeah, so all the... IFC part of Blender Beam and FreeCAD is basically the same, and um, well, let's say the inter interface with it, which is really great because uh, use the same paradigm and lots of works done with one is reusable and the other. Mm. Yeah, yeah, which makes it exciting um, for kind of round tripping, and so I think there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, and it's basically the best uh, IFC engine out there, uh, better than anything commercial, I think. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, the Blender and FreeCAD IFC engine is state of art. Yeah, yeah, and it's you have like lots of examples, stupid examples of IFC files that open perfectly in both these applications and that fail on all the commercial platforms. Uh, for stupid things like how oh, the color is not right or uh, hmm. this kind of stuff, and um, and yeah, I think I feel really more 
you can rely better on, on your files um, using these tools th than, than commercial tools where you open the file, you're not sure that everything is there, you have no way to check that everything is there. Um, Beam projects are complex, like it's really a lot of data. You, you often have mid files of a couple of gigabytes uh, for one file. Uh, and one project is usually you have five, a big project, you have five or six of these files together to, to build the whole project. So it's really, really a lot of data and so much that you cannot um, mm -hmm. check manually anymore. Um, and that's where, uh, together with Blender Beam, uh, you have like a collection of tools that Steven has, has made, uh, tools to check the integrity of your file that are just incredible. And um, well, so I'll it's all... Uh, integrity checking, what, what kind of thing, for example, for checking the integrity of your file? Uh, usually you would check based on rules, uh, like check that all walls have uh, a thickness, for example, uh, or check that um, I don't know. All columns have a vertical dimension that's bigger than their footprint. So uh, this kind of stuff, uh, just mm -hmm. to, that you run on top of your uh, your model to make sure that or to try to find errors in in the model. Mm -hmm. Or let's say let's say uh, you want some uh, let's say all objects must have a material defined. Um, find the objects that have no material. Um, find the objects. Um, I don't know. Win windows that are not using, uh, that are not inserted in a wall, or s things like that, and um, those mm -hmm. kind of stuff that help you to make sure you have a good model. Yeah. Right. And if you take a look at the screen, um, my screen there. So do you do you actually do the process where you model out everything out within Blender? Um. Well, to a certain degree of uh, detail, right? Like some of that stuff that I see there, um, mm -hmm. for a typical project, we probably wouldn't model to that level of detail. It depends on what type of project it is, though. Um, but yeah, I think, well, it's, it's more and more capable. Um, I actually just recently started getting into Blender BIM. I've been using it maybe a year, so I'm still kind of green at it. But I think ultimately we can... We could do like these opening detail projects. I, I'm pretty confident through, with a Blender FreeCAD workflow. Would you agree, York? Yes, fully. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would actually it'd be better than using Revit because um, with Revit your hands are tied. You can all if you run into kind of uh, interoperability problem, you you can't fix it. You know, mm -hmm. with with these workflows, it's kind of nice where. Um, you know, you use these tools and you break something. And you're like, oh, let's, we should try to fix that next time. And, and so you you you, work, you you fix it incrementally type of thing. Do you typically have a, <clears throat> a pattern for okay? So a client wants to build a structure that you design, so you have to go through the very very excruciating detail, you know, little details like you show at opening design, right? Uh, so yep, is yep. that model? When you model it, do you have, for example, a complete house, or you just model? A no. Oh, okay. Yep. Right. That's it's thing. just an isolated. Yeah. It's an isolated detail. Yeah. It's not the whole structure. So. Right. Yes. That would uh, that would be too labor intensive to like model everything. Um, it's just an isolated detail uh, wherever <coughs> we're looking. Um, so. Yeah, we were actually looking at the opposite way. Like, how about we have an exhaustive, say, FreeCAD file that you get a thousand or two thousand people to work on at the same time, and you actually do it because you can define workflows, modular workflows to do that, and you do have that final model. And what is the limit to that? Is it get into? I think it probably gets into memory. Like I was experimenting. Like we have those modules. Um, if I share my screen, like, for example. Uh, so basically, like here, like you can see in this one, it's like, okay, so I'm actually using these technically correct modules and I'm putting them into a final assembly, which has actually got the full detail in each panel, yeah. minus 
minus some interfaces here. Um, but I think the limit, see for a simple house you can do that, like our CD go home, thousand square feet, two story. Yeah. You can pretty and plus, much get away with it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And plus for a project like this where you're looking to repeat it over and over again, yes, doing something like this makes sense, right? Um, to keep refining it and keep adding more detail and because mm -hmm. it's all you're going to do it multiple times and you know you want it to be production ready but for like a one-off type of project there's usually not enough fee right to really detail it out to this degree but yes definitely for something like this i think it makes sense to do it so, so for example so let me ask you a practical question so for example we want to work out um we got our house here this this here is a conceptual model this one uh, and we're trying to say, so I want to get you to, okay, detail this decorative band. Here's the materials we're using. I can tell you some of that. Um, but if I ask you for a problem like this, what would you do to that? Like, would you take like a corner, for example, and say, okay, I'm going to draw out the full model in CAD for that? That's kind of how you would approach it? Or how would you approach it? Yeah, I, w I would take... Let's say I would basically make a big cut um, section through the, this this model and identify on that cut all the, all the important uh, intersections like the uh, base of the wall, the meeting mm -hmm. of the wall and the first floor, uh, the meeting of the the wall and the, and the roof, and you would have like those um, five or six typical situations. Um, that would basically, if, if you could like stretch these details, you would basically do most of your of your uh, of your house. And what happens in between is less important. But um, mm -hmm. let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say. Well, the more like. Um, parametric the design right the more it's going to fluctuate one way or the other um the less it probably m makes sense i don't know i'd have to think about this unless it maybe makes sense to model everything out to the nth degree mm -hmm. um because um it would be hard to keep that parametric nature i guess with those details would you agree on that, York? You know, you know what I'm saying. Where it's just like you have a, you know, I, the concept is for it to be modular, or parametric, and so, um, like it, for instance, modeling out that cornice detail. Um, how would you do it such that you, it could be accommodate that kind of parametric nature in FreeCAD specifically? I'm, you know, I'm not going to get into. Yeah, actually, let me find that. Um there would be room to do something else um because that's ultimately what you're looking for marson right it's like you don't necessarily you're not going to have a static house that's like here it is the whole cons but we're not changing anything but you want to make it a little more parametric or modular and so you can plug and play in certain yeah. things so you mm -hmm. ultimately want the details to be flexible in that nature too right yeah, so the thing that we focus on is the modularity. So we design panels that are walls, windows, doors, and others. Like walls, windows, and doors, if you've got those, you can actually lay out, and then interior walls, you can lay out a technically correct design of outside, inside walls. You can talk about, okay, now the second floor, here's the module for how we do all the joists and stuff like that. And then you can go up to the roof detail, like for example, um, I was showing you this part, like this is actually the technical, I, w I was getting at the technical detail um, where I showed you the conceptual, like for example the conceptual here, like this top top corner detail, I was looking at, it, okay, how, it, how will it look? Well, we know we've got all kinds of modules that are underneath this, and they are indeed quite modular, and at the end of the day, when we put those modules together into a final CAD file, we should be able, we'd like to take a cross section and do like this, okay, here's how you actually build out the decorative band around the house at the top, and here's the gutter detail and EPM roofing and insulation and structure and so forth, so that you can, for any model, 
made of modular parts, you can take out these details readily, which would actually be the same, like, if you use the same modules, those details would end up looking the same. Like, uh, what would be different is that, oh, you're actually building a different geometry of a building. Like, you're not building this uh, two-story, 500-square-foot module, but instead, say, like, a completely different geometry that's L-shaped and whatever. Uh, but, but the modularity applies at the level of, like, for example, say the roof, okay, this is our generic roof structure, a you know, visual diagram of all the layers of the roof from the, the ceiling joists and ceiling. Uh, but, but now you can put this onto any house. It's a flat EPDM roof, for example. Um, so, yeah, so we want to get at this level. So, like, if I were to ask you, hey, get me this, um, you'd probably go at Here's a, you can download the modules that I'm using and you probably go at, I'm going to draw, like at this current, the current way you do it, you just say, okay, let me draw a little subsection model that might be Blender or FreeCAD, and then you work from there, right? Right, correct, mm -hmm. correct, yes. Okay. So, yes, it's an isolated scenario, right, that um, might not necessarily play well into kind of a parametric approach or a modular approach. Mm -hmm. I don't know, hey, your, mm -hmm. what's your thoughts on that? Have a look at the, the link I just uh, pasted there. Uh, that's the construction manual we did for the, the Wikilab. And um, it's actually th these details that, that you saw uh, in opening detail. And those details are usually for um, construction people. People who know about construction, people who know how to read the detail. Mm. And they're used to that kind of representation. When you're dealing with people who are not used to, to construction, um, I believe there would be other things possible um, and other ways to, to show how to build. Um, and those things are like. Um, very easy to do with with a with a beam model, and um, and it's more a matter of um, thinking how how you would um, sequence or, or make the, the mounting of of your um, of your model, um, but. In this case, you, you might want to. It might be interesting um, to think to think a bit in, in that kind of direction as well. Um, I, well, I, I think if, if you're um, if you're just looking at just a modular approach, right, and the the indi individual modules don't like stretch or shrink, right? Yeah. Th then I think it's very doable. Um, but if you're looking for a scenario where you're stretching and um, shrinking yeah. things, right, then I think it's a little more complicated. Indeed. Um, yeah. And uh, yes, uh, if, if you think, uh, okay, you have one model, um, one, for example, one of your wall modules, let's say it makes um, two meter wide. Um, mm -hmm. And um, okay, you have a house that's exactly six of these modules. Uh, in length, okay, your model works. Uh, one person can take one of these modules and just make it six times. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the, the total length of your house is six plus a third of a module, uh, then you begin to have problems. The person cannot use this module anymore. You need a special uh, adapted module to make just a different dimension. And um, so all these kinds of, all, or you have a kind of construction that's really, as Ryan says, uh, modular. Mm -hmm. Everything is based on components. Um, then these things begin to be interesting. Um, if you have something that's custom, that say, ah, the person, instead of having a rectangle, wants to have a plan that it's, it has some dents in it uh, for rooms or for, I don't know. Uh, then it becomes really, really hard to, to like have a standard set, set of details for, for that. 
And if you look at, uh, you have some construction firms uh, out there uh, in Belgium here, it's full, uh, who do like um, very cheap, same houses uh, you buy on the catalog. Uh, you go to the constructor, you look at the catalog and you pick one house style and they build that house for you. And uh, you can choose you can choose between three, three types of front door, that that's basically it. And all the houses have the same size, they have the same... And if you do that, um, really it begins to, to make sense to have a kind of set, extremely um, rigid set of modules. Um, if you go out of... If you don't have that... Um, it's really, really hard to have a set of details that work for, for everything. So yeah, it's probably more a matter of defining, okay, our house can be three models long or five models long, or that kind of stuff. And then you have 30, 40, 50 components that you, that you put together. And uh, it's like a Lego. Uh, you can only work with those components. Right. Um, then yes. it works really well. Mm -hmm. For the wiki house structure, you did that, the, the three D stuff and annotations. That's all done in in FreeCAD. Yeah, fully fully FreeCAD. Full FreeCAD project. Yeah. All all the all the files are, are there to see if you can see the same purpose too. Nice. How much time do you think it would take you to design a panel? So, for example, right now we have uh, the bathroom, which actually's got plumbing. Well, plumbing inside the wall. It's, it's there's there's several wall panels between the kitchen and bathroom that we need detailing on. Like, um, what would you estimate would be the time? So it's a it's a pa panels that have built-in plumbing and electrical in them, like. What's a realistic time or cost estimate for you guys, say, to design them? Because they're qu once you have them, they're actually quite self-contained, and they could apply to all the different CD homes as long as they have the particular pattern. Here's the bathroom, and here's the kitchen next to it in a particular way. Like, well, to give you let's see, more detail here, uh, if I share my screen, yeah, Let me share this. So this gets you. This, that's actually what's what's happening uh, for the inner walls. Yeah. Okay. There's the kitchen. That's the bathroom there in the kitchen. So so we need design. For example, on these panels here, there's actually. Uh, Three panels here and two panels there that go that's there between that's the kitchen here that's the bathroom there and that's a little laundry thing uh, but say to design one of these panels like can uh, what it would it take for example to hire you guys or or uh, you know draw this panel out it's, it's actually got I can specify the components it has in there because it's got some plumbing and, sh and shower attach attachment and some other <coughs> internal components that make this into the module where it's not just that module for this house, it's actually quite universal. Just like, say, the exterior walls are universal because they can be used for any house. Um, so would you guys be interested in doing something like this or uh, working on this, or can I hire you guys, or what would that sure. look like? Um, so to design, yeah, I would defer. I would yeah. defer to to York on this, obviously, uh, because it's free CAD. He's more comfortable with the workload things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's easy, and you could you could even think of having like a, you know, a kind of um, that's totally it would be totally doable that to have such a wall that it's fully parametric, like you can stretch it in height and in width, and define the position of the. I don't know where is the faucet, where is the faucet on the other side in the bathroom and that kind of stuff. And um, 
Yeah, and we don't yeah, even we, we don't need that. We wanna we don't need even that. We we want would like to keep it at the level of here's a four by eight module because of the parallel build workflow. So when we build these, you can have a number of teams, like say two people. Uh, there's 48 panels exterior for the house. You can literally have a hundred people, and in one hour you'd have all the wall modules. Maybe two hours because the two hours for the window and door modules because they're more complicated. But for the plain walls, uh, 30 minutes later, you've got all the plain wall panels that, that have the minimal com complexity. You can really scale the parallel nature of the build. So here, that's why we're doing the 4x8 panels or 4x9. These are actually 9 feet tall here on the first floor. Uh, but what we want to do is get them at the level of the 4x9s because that's how we're designing them for build for the maximum swarmability. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, so what would it look like, say, say Yorick, we, we got you to help on this, can you, uh, like, what would, the, what would your workflow look like? Uh, can you, because what we would like to have, we would like to have, uh, as you see here, we first start conceptualizing, uh, like, let's see, do I have any details of what's in these walls? Um, not particularly in this document, but there's details of, I can specify what details go inside each wall. Uh, starting with the conceptual docs, because for, for example, like um, the utilities that are going to be involved, there's actually going to be a water heater on one of those panels. Um, there might be a check valve and some plumbing in there, etc. What, whatever, whatever it is in there. But we we typically start with these conceptual work docs, then go into uh, designing an actual library part for FreeCAD, and mm -hmm. then. Uh, extracting the detail or build detail from that uh, including the details say for the con probably for the building departments or anybody who's building like okay how does this panel fit to the next panel and so forth um, yeah but yeah um, yeah of, of course uh, I would be interested in helping that and I can do that um, Which free what are you, are you working in 19 right now? You, you're looking for, um, let's say, modeling stuff, or um, help with design the house itself. Uh, so we know that, like right now, we have a model that's relatively complete outside of certain parts, like for example that wall, like the details of the interior walls. So. Mm -hmm. Um, the floor plan we pretty much have worked out, so it's about actually filling in, okay, now what do the actual panels that we build in there look like in order to sustain the plumbing and electrical that's going to go in there and all the functionality that, that goes into it. So, right. But the design of the panel itself, okay, if that panel there, like for example, it has a vent stack that, that comes from the, the bathroom or it has a, also has a bathroom fan attached to it, we just have to consider, okay, here's the, here's the panel and here's the axe absolute best easiest way that you design it for build so that's why I ask a lot of times like um, mm -hmm. how do you make sure that it's buildable which comes from experience of building things but um, we have to consider that in the design because we're assuming that you don't have to be a pro to, to do this this is something that novices yeah. can do mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, it's pretty much the, um, a matter of finding ways to, to, to explain, represent the stuff, and, and to mount. Um, that was kind of interesting work we did with the, with the Wikilab, not only to find how to build it, but uh, how to explain how to build it to, to people who are not into, into construction. Mm -hmm. um, and much of the of, of the work was there there as well, and um, yeah, th that's where that's where having a kind of let's say a plan of how this all get built together helps because basically mm -hmm. the manual that showed you follows the construction. Basically, mm -hmm. it's a step by step uh, series of snapshots of, of the construction itself. And um, so, yeah, I, I would, I would say, I would follow that kind of.
kind of guideline to, to uh, yeah. as a kind of structure of, of your whole uh, system, mm -hmm. documentation system, let's say. And then the, the, the modules you design come on that timeline. Uh, start with the foundations, uh, then the typical wall building and what you need to put to think in the walls before uh, putting them into place and that kind of stuff. Uh, structure, if there is an independent structure, and and so on. And um, that's how I would like divide the things. I would say, um, let's say here is your four plans. You need five types uh, of modules: one for plain wall, one when there is a window, one when there is a bathroom and kitchen, and that kind of stuff. Then you explain these five modules, then go on to the next step, etc. Et um, so not so much, I would think, not so much in terms of construction details, that would be something needed for, let's say, you would handle the, the wall file to a constructor and tell the constructor to go ahead and build it. But uh, if you need to explain people how to build it without experience, um, I think they have to know what to do one before the, the other and, and, and that kind of yeah. stuff. Well, there will be so different levels because this is doable yeah. by novices, but also this is something that you can, if you have the complete set of plans, so we'll publish this, what, what I mentioned as the CD Go Home Extreme Enterprise Manual, that's what we call it. Yeah. It basically yeah, allows you like to build it mm. or have it built, like you j just give the plans to, yeah. to a constructor. Mm. Are you thinking of like these individual modules? Are they going to be built by professional uh, contractors, and then the modules then will be could be put together by anybody, or it's, it's right any, from the beginning? Any scenario, both okay. an unskilled novice can build them, like we did the CD go home here, the house I live in right now. That's been built that way. We had fifty people for five days, and we built the structure. So like what you see here, I mean, those are actually behind me. Those are the actual panels. That's a slanted wall panel um, behind me, let's say. But um, it allows a novice, both novice or a professional to do that. And the professional case would be like, okay, say you want to build this house, but you want it now, you've got a person in construction that can do it for you. Yeah, here's the plans, here's the package. Just uh, They might not need all the details like in a WikiHouse document that Yorick showed because they know how to build stuff. So you just give them the, the p kind of plans you would submit to a building department or something like that. Probably more detail than that. Mm. Gotcha. Uh, are typically okay. like what you submit to the building department, are those sufficient for a builder to build from or there's more work than, or typically that's not sufficient? No, um, around here it's it's sufficient. Um, yeah. With, with a, yeah, with typical residential construction here in the States, um, it's less detailed than a commercial structure is because the contractor can kind of fill in the gaps, right? The contractor can fill in the gaps and doesn't need all the details. Um, a lot of times because it's conventional. Your sound went really low yeah. right now. Uh, oh, sorry. There Your computer is um, falling. Sorry, my, that's my phone. Uh, I was saying just the um, construction set or permit set for resident res residential construction is not as thorough and detailed because um, you can lean on the contractor, general contractor, to kind of fill in the voids. Because yeah. a lot of times, the residential construction is kind of a typical, you know, do it over and over again. Oh, and and that's the actual exact feature that we're actually designing out, the making stuff up. Because um, we provide enough detail and everything's kind of like housing 2.0, full digital model. There's no question of how you do things because we can actually lay that out for people and therefore save themselves a lot of labor and experimentation. Uh, because in cases like where the, the con contractor wants to do it a particular way, well, we specify how that can be done to make it effective and, and easy and low cost. So there's cost savings that a person building that can really benefit from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so so maybe what we can do right now, I can maybe send Yorick, maybe send you some more info on like, okay, let's just take that module right behind the shower. Like, I, I can show you, okay, this is the showers behind it. Here's the kitchen, now, and all the parts mm -hmm. in it. Maybe you can see. What we do want to have is a full digital model. So can you do it yeah. at that level of detail? 
definitely. And how uh, you, yes. How do you handle? Go ahead. I was going to ask. How do you handle screws? Can you put those in there too? Sure. Yeah. In the Wikilab models, you have basically all the screws. Yeah. And how many? Hundreds. Yeah, three or four hundreds. Uh, how did you do that? I mean, did you do like a simplification file? A very simple. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, if I remember well, it's just a cylinder with a yeah. with a head. Yeah, yeah. So stuff like that. Where obviously yeah. you wouldn't put the threads on because you'd have a gigabyte model. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yep. um, if I remember well, we have several models. I have a simple model with everything mm -hmm. and a couple of parts in more. I have one big section which is fully detailed or something like that. Um, but yeah, you, you find ways to, to make it uh, hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you can handle it. Um, oh, different setup. Wow. Uh, Sorry, my power house. battery died. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And as far as... Uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. And let, let's see how we can use the, like the more important thing is like, say say we actually get a cross-sectional view detail of say how this module fits to the house module, uh, the external wall module. Uh, let's, can you try to do a, an instructional on how you actually go through that entire process? Or did you publish any videos like that already where you walk somebody, uh, okay, here's how I go through this cross-sectional views and details. Is there any good stuff online that you no. published yet or no you have to do if it would be in portuguese unfortunately but if you open the the, the free cat files that are there in the wiki lab you see all the section planes and stuff uh, all that stuff yeah it's explained everywhere on the free cat forum or the wiki i mean um there is all the normal documentation of how, how this stuff works Mm -hmm. uh, but it's much more a question of rather than how to use the frigate tools, it's how, how you think your your model and it's much more than just uh, thinking how you organize your, your stuff, it's how you think uh, of the, the logical sequence of building this this thing, both building digitally and building um, in, in real mm -hmm. and um, how you separate things, how you, you define what's what's a module and what's mm -hmm. not and, and what's in between and yeah um, yeah but yeah, if you, if you, if you agree with that work i would say let, let's try let's test something let's test let's test yeah, that one module let's try and see how the yeah let's works. do one one of these walls mm -hmm. and see how that works and if that can be used that way to, to build the whole house and yeah over that yeah Let's do that. So, so I'll follow up with you on that. I'll send you more info. All right. On that. Cool. Very cool. Because ideally, you know, the thing that, with respect to the public, we talk about public engineering, getting more people involved in these processes, because these processes can be broken down into individual steps. Like we say that genius is like 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Like that's Edison said that. But it's really about, okay, so you have the process, but then, the actually doing it takes a long time, right? Yeah. Uh, very long time. And it's, yeah, it's quite a lot of, yeah, it's quite a lot of modeling if you want to model yeah. such a house completely. Uh, but something, once once you have a start, uh, examples, and also you have the structure, the whole thing, um, and especially if it's open, um, right. other people can, can do it. Other yeah, exactly. people can yeah. take That's one example and go ahead and so uh, it can be really streamlined that, that way yeah, yeah indeed. and it's also can you guys hear me yes it's i think it's highly especially in these early days of open source software and in you know things that are evolving the process and how you're actually doing is is highly dependent on who you're working with exactly <laughs> it's not like we should do it this way this way and this way it's there is no right way. It's highly dependent on the, the, the core people, of group, the group of people that you're working with. And it's always going to evolve. It's always going to change, right? you got to be kind of flexible in that, in that manner. You know, I guess that's kind of just open source in general. But, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's not on the technology, especially these early days when things evolve. You're, you're, 
you're evolving with FreeCAD, you're evolving with Blender, you're evolving with your construction set, right? It's mm -hmm. it's all these moving parts that inform one or, uh, or another, and and it's hard to say, hey, how you know how long is it going to do to do X, Y, and Z? It's like it's kind of hard to tell because it's like it's never been done before. So yeah, of course, that's, that's why I love doing you know, working with York and I'm working with you know Dion and all these other people. Is that you know we have actual physical projects like the one you're working on, and we just try to hash out these workflows as we go through it, you know. Yeah. And that's the fun part. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There's different audiences. At the same time, our particular audience is okay. Here's a, a person who wants to take a crash course or a summer course, or or actually become a builder. For us, it's we're training people to build these houses. We also want to train. I'm also starting from tech school, like novices, people who don't even know FreeCAD. We can teach them FreeCAD, basic workflows, and say, okay, here's the design guides for how you use these modular building modules. And at the next step, it's here how we, here's how you actually uh, extract the building documents or design new modules. But the assumption there is empowering people who, if they want a crash course in learning this entire process, which is reduced to a much simpler building system, that they can do it. They can learn it from scratch. So, so the idea is, for us, it's all about empowering the novices and masses because we believe that anybody should be able to build their own house and be able to design it in open source tools because that depends on how much prior art is there. That's, that's all. If you've got all sure. the prior art, your, your process of redesigning or building are easy easier yeah yeah no it's exciting yeah, yeah for sure yeah okay yeah so let's let's take this as a use case of what we can do to develop to move these uh workflows further yeah okay excellent awesome awesome great okay, thanks Marcin. see you see you around oh. yep bye right. you guys